guys, today we are going to do the cheap versus expensive on 6,000 pound diesel mini excavators. Both these machines are within a couple hundred pounds of each other. And before we get started, I would like to thank Romar Supply and Troy, Missouri for donating the use of this machine today. They're my go-to for all my rentals. They heard we wanted to do a comparison and they were happy to let us put a couple hours on it today to make this happen. So thank you very much. So the specs on this one are all in millimeters. I'm gonna say it on this one. So 25 horsepower, three cylinder Perkins diesel. Um, not sure on what the pumps are, probably off brand on all the pumps. It has probably about a seven, seven and a half foot dig depth on this. And then this one right here, key the specs on the VO25. So this is gonna have less horsepower, but a lot better pumps. So you'll also notice that the stick before you guys go run into the comments, this has a longer stick and a smaller bucket. This is the closest comparison I could get. So this one is not going to have the same dig depth. This one's gonna be able to dig about two feet further. That's just the way the boom is designed on that. We're gonna look past that when we do the digging test. The buckets, even though the width difference is there, they probably have about the same capacity. So we're just gonna make sure that the trenches are the same width and they should be moving the same amount of material. We'll try and keep it as fair as possible. Um, obviously, I think this one's gonna do a little bit better. So let's get straight into it. What you'll notice about these two machines, first of all, the undercarriage length on this one. It feels so much more stable. As you can tell, it's heavier built. And the main thing with the drive system on the Yanmar here, the drive motor is where it's supposed to be actually in the hub, right? The drive motor is back here. <clears throat> and before you guys start saying, oh, Yanmar, that's an off-brand. Yanmar's not an off-brand. I prefer them over Bobcat Minis, over Kubota Minis. I think they're one of the best machines on the market right now. Caterpillar might have a little bit of advantage over them. Um, the only minis that I do like better than the Yanmar is the Deer. I think the Deers lift a little bit more, but they still use Yanmar engines. Yanmar, in some people's opinion, makes the most and the most reliable small diesel engines in the world. And if you know anything about small diesel engines, you would know that the Japanese absolutely dominate the market on that. Um, there's no comparison. Also with the Perkins diesel on this, it's kind of a Yanmar is what Deere uses in all their mini excavators and Caterpillar owns Perkins. So all of the diesel engines and like Caterpillar skid steers, yes, they say cat on them, but really a majority of them are Perkins. So almost got a Caterpillar versus Deere thing going on here. Actually not even close. So check out the drive motors on this. So instead of doing an in-hub design, it was much cheaper. They put the cheaper, larger motor further back, and then they use a chain drive in this outer casing. See that outer casing over here? So the motor's up here, and then they use an enclosed chain drive casing to do all their gear reduction and everything. So single speed, two speed, that's gonna make a huge difference. So without further ado, let's get just straight into the lifting test here and see what they'll do. So you guys have already seen the Chinese Mini do it. So this lift right here is 700 pounds is what this bucket weighs. This machine's gonna be a little bit at a disadvantage because of the longer arm. It's gonna mess around with the ergonomics and the tipping load on it, but we're gonna see how it does. So 700 pounds. 1,350 pounds, 1,800 pounds, and we'll see if we can find anything heavier. As most of you probably figured, no problem at all. Right here, we're 
putting the hydraulic stall on the boom. It doesn't quite want to do it. Same thing happened on that Mini. But regardless, even with the disadvantage with the longer arm, this one still does it just fine. So now we're going to move to the block and we're going to see which one actually lifts the block better. We know that machine does these two just fine. You see that in the previous video. That's going to be in the uh, tag in the comments or in the description box. Oh. This one, new, is going to set you back around $50,000. That one, about fifteen. Let's get that one back on here. we got roughly the same result like I said this this guy was at a bit of a disadvantage on, disadvantage on the lifting it has the torque and it has the pump capacity but maybe it's just turned down a touch this is just max effort all the time that's it gives it all it's got so but I will say this one feels so much better it's you don't have the cab rattling around or outside you. You sit up a little bit taller. You sit a little bit further back. It just, it feels good. It feels heavier. It feels more stable by far. There's, uh, there's no arguing that. So next, it's going to be the digging competition. We are going to mark out a two foot wide, six foot long, two foot deep trench. So. Like I said, bucket capacity is probably close to the same. This machine should have more breakout force and the better bucket design. So we're going to time one, time the other, make sure they're digging the same size hole, keep it as fair as possible, and see what we can make of it. Go!
Two minutes and 53 seconds. Ready? Go! Two minutes and 44 seconds. I think I dug this hole quite a bit bigger. It looks like it, doesn't it? Like I should have stopped it there. It looks a little bit bigger. Yeah. So I will tell you this, it dug so much better than this. Felt so much more controlled. It's fast where you want it to be, and it's also precise where you need it to be. This is just everything's fast and there's not a lot of precision fast is good but sometimes you'd rather have it more slow and controlled this will if you're on it all day it'll make you a smooth operator that's for sure but the ease of use with this one so much better i mean i'm giving the digging competition by far i don't think the time does it justice because i think i took a lot more dirt out over here so uh now we'll do a quick little thing i'll backfill the hole with each of them and then we'll go on to uh, the test after that. I think we're just going to do like, I'll run it back and forth and spin it around and dig through the air. And you'll be able to see like which machine is more stable, which one looks more comfortable, which one looks more ergonomic. So we'll start by uh, backfilling these.
all that good. We're not exactly uh, looking for precision here, but I think the back filling kind of gives you a good idea of how jumpy this thing is, and I really wish it had a longer track base. I mean, this undercarriage just takes the cake. You're about to see how much, I've been running them both at full throttle and trying to be smooth and precise. Well, the bolts on the seat are also coming loose, so it doesn't help that I'm sliding back and forth several inches in that cab. So it also kind of, you know, makes it hard to stay still and be precise. So now you see the difference. Yo, Yamar! Oh, not to mention, uh, these, uh, I, I broke the cylinder guard on that. It did do its job, though. When I was using my trailer as a hillbilly oil changing station for my skid steer, I had to have this all the way forward on the trailer, even with it hooked to my truck, so that the gooseneck didn't pick the ass end of my truck up off the ground as I was using it to get under there to fix an oil leak and do an oil change. I don't have a shop yet, I'm working towards it. Please like and share this, it might, that extra five bucks goes a, goes a long way in my world. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it bent it and it bent it in I went to set it down and uh, I didn't realize it was dark out I was setting it right on the cross beam of my gooseneck so it bent it in it ruined the guard but it didn't hurt the cylinder and actually I'm able to hammer the guard back it it cross threaded and I'd have to retap this a, a size bigger and use a size bigger bolt because it ripped that out but it I couldn't believe it it did its job and it protected the cylinder so hats off to it on that one i guess This one I would be comfortable on and smooth enough to where I've graded whole, you know, small backyards that are, you know, 40 by 50 or whatever. I've trenched in gutter downspouts, finished graded the backyard entirely with a mini excavator, something around this size. Well, mine, mine was a hair smaller back in the day, but I would grade whole yards with it. So that precision is really, really helpful. So this one again takes the cake because it's so much smoother. Would I want to finish grade something in that? No. The, the pushing power that it has is pretty great. You can feel the power. It doesn't bog down. It doesn't even think about it. Whatever they did, chain drive gearing, you can almost kind of, when it gets under a load, you can almost kind of feel that, feel that chain kind of really chewing at it not like it's slipping or anything but you can tell or maybe it's the cheap rollers or who knows but it just it pushes i'd like to do a tug of war but it'd be totally pointless because i think this one might be a couple hundred pounds lighter plus it just doesn't have the track base so this thing would just destroy it and then there's also if i break that chain in there then I gotta disassemble all that and that'd be a whole pain in the ass. So, um, next, let's have a race. And I think, Grant, you're just gonna hold the camera. We're gonna line up side by side and you're gonna use two speed on that and basically you'll just be able to film yourself as I'm back there. <laughs> so, that's about how that's gonna go. But we'll get them lined up and we'll race from here to there. Two speed versus one speed. I'm going to be eating this dust.
competition was uh, no competition. Let's see, uh, let's test some cooling power. So I was thinking, what's something big and heavy? I think a tug of war would be an unfair competition, but what about if they each had to move a set amount of weight? Well, we have this, and it is big and heavy. And it's slightly uphill from here to the barn. So I'm figuring, just hook, hook a chain to them, and just see which one is going to get it from there to there, if it has the torque to even budge it. So we'll get this thing aired up, put it in neutral, and see what we can do. takes the cake that longer track base there you go we got more traction this thing does not have any factory hook points besides that blade although I am surprised it kept chewing and nothing broke it, it's got I mean it it spins them down it's, reindeer work right you get a bunch of them together they tow a big sled think yeah. we got enough reindeer maybe well the problem is the only place to hook to this one is that and the ways i figures is that wants to stay where it's at and these two want to go forward and the cheap ones in the middle i don't know if it would just go two different directions There's only one way to find out next video that you guys are going to see is actually going to be on this truck here it's uh it's not quite mine it's not quite my dad's it's somewhere in the middle unrelated to the excavation business but uh, it does have a boom on there knuckle boom we're gonna be getting into that showing the capabilities of it picking up some heavy stuff maybe Maybe doing some OSHA violations. I don't know. I mean, probably, but we'll figure it out. So uh, stay tuned. Thanks for watching. And uh, 